Math 31, I want to introduce this idea of multiplicity and show you how the multiplicities for x-intercepts, how those numbers can help you with the graph of your function or vice versa. So graphical behavior of polynomials at x-intercepts. And again, remember that x-intercepts are also referred to as zeros. So if a polynomial contains a factor of the form x minus h raised to some p, all right, to some power, the behavior near the x-intercept, that x-intercept being h, is determined by the power of p. So we know some information based on whether this power is even or odd. All right, so we say that x equals h is a zero, an x-intercept of multiplicity p. All right. So the graph of a polynomial function will touch the x-axis at zeros with even multiplicities. All right, so you're gonna just touch the x-axis if you have an even power up here. All right, but the graph will cross the x-axis at zeros with odd multiplicities. So you'll touch the x-axis if you have an even power on your factor. You will cross through the x-axis if you have an odd power on your factor. And then there's this nice little added piece that the sum of the multiplicities has to be equal to the degree of the polynomial function. So we're going to play these three ideas out with this example in, in four, and we're going to do it graphically for right now. All right, so with that, I'm going to scooch this up, see how much I can leave. I'll try and leave this in view just for right now. We might have to scooch below that not too long from now. But it says use the graph of the function of degree 5 in the figure below to identify the zeros of the function and their multiplicities. Well, let's do the easier of these two questions right now. First of all, I'm told this is degree 5. Great, but they want the zeros. Zeros, it's another term for x-intercepts. All right, and we've seen that even in our calculator. If I just pull up my calculator screen, if I hit second and trace, they actually use the word zero in here as opposed to x-intercept, same thing. All right, so let's see, where do I cross the x-axis? I see a point here, here, and here. Now, if I have a degree five polynomial, I will have at most five zeros. And it's fine, I only see three, but that's, that's at least in the at most five category. So my three zeros appear to be negative five zero. All right, it looks like we have one at negative one zero. And then that looks to be three zero. Now before we start to talk about their multiplicities, I wanna take a look at the differences in these three zeros. I want you to take note that at this x-intercept, I cross the x-axis. At this x-intercept, I touch the x-axis. And the same thing is true for this x-intercept. I touch the x-axis. All right, so we're gonna have to do a bit of deductive reasoning here. So these three sentences are all about to come into play. Anytime you touch the x-axis, you have an even multiplicity. So that means for these two right here, I know I would have even multiplicities. All right, and on the flip of that, it says I cross the x-axis whenever I have an odd multiplicity. And just to remind you what I mean when I say multiplicity, I'm gonna scooch this back down. All right, I just wanna show you. When you have an even or an odd multiplicity, it means the power that's associated with your factor is either an even or an odd number. All right, even numbers touch the x-axis, odd numbers, or I should say even powers, the, the graph will touch the x-axis at that zero. If you have an odd power or an odd multiplicity, the, x in, or the graph will cross the x-axis at that zero. All right, so we had, oops, you can't see it. We had cross, touch, touch. All right, now I do wanna take a look at the last sentence in this box. The last sentence in this box says that the sum of the multiplicities should be equal to the degree of the polynomial function. So when we think about how that plays out here, we have to have these three multiplicities add up to five somehow. All right, so let's, let's start to unpack this, right? 
So if we take a look at this, if the multiplicities have to add up to five and we have to go even, even, odd, I want you to think of three numbers that I could add together and they have to all be positive that would sum up to five and we have to go even, even, odd, or if I'm going in order, odd, even, even. So how could I have an odd number and then an even number and then another even number add up to five? Well, hopefully you're seeing the only combination is one plus two plus two. That is the only way to get three numbers that have to be positive and have to be of the form odd, even, and even to add up to five. So let me scooch this up even some more. And let's start to write this out so that we have it written formally. All right, so since the multiplicities must sum to five, okay, so let me write this. Do I have space to write? I'll write it here. Um, so I'll actually just write the paragraph here. So since the multiplicities must sum to five, all right, i.e. the degree of the polynomial, We know, we know the following. We know negative five zero has a multiplicity of one. Okay, it's gotta have a multiplicity of one because it crossed the x-axis. It's gotta be an odd number. All right, I'm gonna scooch this up some more because I think I'm about to run out of room. Let me get that. Let's get to the top of the graph. That's about right. Okay. We also know that negative one zero has a multiplicity of two. And again, it has to have an even power on its on that factor because it touches the x-axis. And by that same rationale, three zero also has a multiplicity of two. So I've answered the question asked of me, right? I found the zeros and I found their respective multiplicities, but I want to extend on this just a little bit further, just so we can, we can go a little bit further. I want to talk about how this would affect the equation. So if I gave you this graph, you could actually get me a pretty solid equation for what this function is equal to. We could say f of x. Now I'm gonna put a little a here, a little constant, because I don't know what the coefficient, the initial coefficient would be, but I do know three factors that are involved in this polynomial. And here's how this works. If negative five zero is an x-intercept, that means x plus five must have been a factor. All right. If negative one zero was an x-intercept, of this polynomial, then I know x plus one must have been a factor because that's what would that's the factor that would be zeroed out by the value of negative one. And similarly with three, we would have x minus three. It's always of the form x minus h, where h is your x intercept or the x coordinate of your x intercept. But we know the multiplicities. So the multiplicity refers to the powers on each of these factors. So we have one, two, and two respectively. So if I'm simplifying this a bit, I know f of x is equal to a times x plus five. I know I have x plus one squared, again, because negative one zero touched the x-axis. It had to have an even power, an even multiplicity. Same thing with the zero at x equaling three. If you ever wanted to find out the a value, the way we typically do that is we, we solve for a by plugging in the y-intercept. Now again, this is above and beyond everything that was asked of you, but I do want, I want you to see this play out, right? So I also happen to know my y-intercept is at 0, 10. So you can plug in 10 for y, and you can plug in 0 for x, and we'll be able to solve for a in just a moment. It might not be a fun number, but we can do it. So I get 10 equaling a times 5 times 1. This will be times 9. So if I simplify this a little bit, it looks like a is gonna be equal to 10 over 45. 
and you can reduce that in your head. Oops, you know what, let me scooch this up. Sorry, we're running out of room. Just so much math to do right here. All right, let me make sure we have all of that room. All right, so if I wanna simplify, again, you can simplify that in your head or I just wanna remind you, let's go back home. You can hit math frac and your calculator will simplify that to two ninths for you anyways. So I could write two over nine. So ultimately, if I wanted to, and again, above and beyond, this little bubble is above and beyond, but it's a preview of what's to come. This would be two ninths times x plus five times x plus one squared times x minus three squared. So I went from that graph to my function based on multiplicities and the x and y intercepts. Right. So just based off of the intercepts and their multiplicities, I could really figure out a lot about this function. All right, so with that, we're gonna flip the page and we're gonna practice graphing polynomials. All right, we wanna graph as many as we can, so they just seem super familiar to us and we can graph them on the spot, lickety-split. All right, thanks guys, I'll see you in a bit, bye.